Three separate parables with one message. God loves you and is willing to drop everything to find you. The shepherd. He has 100 sheep and loses one. One dumb wandering sheep. Now, if I had $99 and you had 100, it's basically the same. To us, it's barely noticeable. But for some reason, the shepherd leaves his flock in search of the lost one. When he finds it, he is filled with joy and brings it home. He invites his friends and neighbors to his home and throws a party to celebrate. The woman. She has 10 coins, and for some reason, she loses one in her house. Now, if I were to lose a coin in my house, I wouldn't worry about it. I'd just find it some other time. But she ravages and tears up her home until she finds it. Then she brings her friends and neighbors to her home for a party, most probably costing more than the coins she already had. The father. He has two sons and gives the younger and perhaps less wise son his inheritance. He moves away and loses it all. That son figures out that life was better with his father, so he makes his way back home. And on his way back, the father sees and runs to him. Now, if I were that father, I'd be willing to teach my son a wise lesson. But he doesn't do that. He hugs his son, gives him new clothes and a feast. For his return, throws a party to celebrate. Familiar parables? Yes. We've heard proclaimed many times. The parable we call the prodigal son tells of the son who wants to have things his way the way we sometimes want our own, our way. The father let his son leave. This is the prodigal son. He lets him go out and he lets him do whatever he wants. He waited for his son to repent and change his life. And when he came home, his father didn't condemn him. His father loved him. The Old Testament scripture says, if my people who have called by name will humble themselves and pray, then I will heal their wounds. God wants to heal our wounds. I want to comfort you. Come back home. And when we do, we've got to do the same as the prodigal son did. We've got to pray and repent. And the son started praying to his father. And when his father sees him far away, he runs and grabs him and brings him home. And that's exactly what God wants to do for us. He wants to embrace us like the father embraced his son. It's the same Christ who embraces all of us who stay home with the father. The father calls each of us home today to embrace us, to love us, to say that we are not alone in our pain. In 1864, a young teenager named Roswell McIntyre was drafted into the New York Cavalry during the Civil War. He was sent into battle with very little training, and he was very, very young, and he was terrified. The fear got the best of him, and he ended up running away from his battalion. Not long after, he was caught and tried for desertion by the cavalry. He was found guilty, court-martialed, and was sentenced to be shot. Roswell's mother appealed to President Lincoln. She pleaded that he was young and deserved a second chance. Lincoln thought long and hard about it. He said, I have observed, he said, that it never does a boy much good to shoot him. He sat down and wrote by hand the following letter. This letter will certify that Roswell McIntyre is to be readmitted into the New York Cavalry. When he serves out his required enlistment, he will be freed of any charges of desertion. 
That letter with Lincoln's signature is now on display in the Library of Congress. Beside it is a note which reads, this letter was taken from the body of Roswell McIntyre, who died at the Battle of Little Five Forks, Virginia. You see, Roswell was killed in battle just a few weeks after he received Lincoln's letter. Yet he didn't die a traitor or a deserter. Roswell McIntyre, by the mercy of President Lincoln, gave his life in service to his country. Scholars continue to debate whether or not Lincoln was a believing Christian. There's no question he knew scripture intimately, including the prodigal son. And he took his lesson of mercy to heart. In his second inaugural address, President Lincoln spoke of having malice towards no and charity for all. When someone later asked that day how he planned to treat the Southerners who had broken away from the country, the President replied, I will treat them as if they had never been away. He could have been speaking as the father of the prodigal son. He could have been speaking as our father speaks today about forgiveness and repentance. When we encounter this scripture, we usually approach it from the point of view of the son. But maybe we have it backwards. Ultimately, it is a story of a father's love, a lesson in how far our Heavenly Father is willing to go for us. He runs to us even when we are far away. It begins with reconciliation with one another and most specifically with God. The Eucharist we are about to receive reminds us of the greatest gift that God gave the world, his son. As the prodigal son discovered the road that leads away from the father also leads back to the father. Be assured and hold on to this truth. Even though we may walk away from God, he never walks away from us. He is here waiting. May the angels rejoice and celebrate as you return to the arms of your shepherd, keeper, father, savior, and learn to live and love like Jesus. May you run to meet those who are wounded and ashamed and hurt and who want to come home. Open your arms to someone who wants to start over. May you know the value of the second chance Believe in redemption and conversion and hope and repentance. And may you know the love of God now and forever. Amen.